hello <clears throat> so good day so in this lecture we will discuss about metal alloys and uh, what are the different properties affected by alloying any any type of metal available in this nature okay so so far we discussed about different phase diagram and a heat treatment process uh, which is used to vary the properties of the materials okay so one of the important strengthening mechanism we use in any of the engineering application is alloy okay so we prepare materials in the form of alloy for any engineering application so what is an alloy an alloy is a substance that has a metallic properties and is composed of two or more chemical elements of which at least one is a metal so that is an alloy so here in an alloying operation what we do we add some impurities into the pure material for example in case of steel steel is a very good example for alloy which is commonly used in uh, different engineering application in case of steel our material the base metal is iron iron if we in that iron we add the impurity which is carbon so we already discussed the influence of adding carbon into the iron and based on the percentage of carbon added into the iron we um, plot a phase diagram okay then um, we plot a uh, ttt and a cct diagram based on the time based on the time and uh, um, transformation from different phases to another phase okay so here in this case of steel that is a metal alloy in this steel we add carbon impurity into the iron okay so by adding carbon into iron we can improve the property so basically the iron has um, a particular amount of strength hardness toughness uh, or ductility etc so by adding this impurity carbon into iron we can improve all the engineering or the mechanical properties okay so that is the advantage of alloying process so during the alloy uh, alloying impurities atoms are intentionally added to impart intentionally added to impart specific properties to the material okay so it is not a naturally uh, occurring situation we intentionally added impurity atoms into the uh, material uh, during alloying process okay so thereby we can improve the specific properties of the material like uh, um, we can improve the strength uh, or corrosion resistance or toughness hardness ductility any of the mechanical properties can be improved by adding different types of alloy elements okay so we are discussing um, what are the uh, more specifically about the steel because the steel which is um, predominantly used in uh, most of the engineering applications uh, in our day okay so we mainly concentrate on this alloy called steel that is alloy of iron and carbon okay basically we can say this is the alloy of iron and carbon but we are adding different types of another impurity atoms also into the steel for um, altering the properties of the steel okay so we will discuss all these things uh, uh, under this lecture <clears throat> so basically steels the one of the important uh, alloy elements or alloy material used in engineering application that is steel we can classify steel into uh, um, before that the alloy metal alloys can be grouped into two that is first one is ferrous alloy so metal alloy can be metal alloy can be grouped into two okay first one is ferrous alloy ferrous alloy and second one is non ferrous alloy non ferrous alloy okay this is the primary classification alloy and in this um, ferrous alloy in this ferrous alloy the primary or the principal constituent is steel oh, sorry uh, iron the principal constituent is iron okay for example in case of ferrous alloy there are different example and the uh, steel this is a ferrous alloy or cast iron that is a ferrous alloy okay so in case of ferrous alloy the primary or principal constituent is iron and in case of non-ferrous alloys we have different 
um, constituents like uh, uh, aluminium, it may be aluminium or uh, copper, or these are the different types of primary constituents in case of non ferrous alloy. Okay, <clears throat> in this, uh, more specifically, the important engineering material is this ferrous alloys, steel and uh, copper. Okay, so when we use uh, steel or uh, iron ferrous alloys for different engineering applications, there are three reasons for using this ferrous alloy for most of the engineering. Iron is um, the, and its compounds are abundant quantity which is available in this nature. Okay, we have lots of iron ore or iron materials available in this nature, in this earth. So, lots of iron ore or iron materials available in this nature, in this earth. So, um, that is the most available material. So, we can use this iron for different engineering application. And second one is that the steel or iron uh, that uh, actually uh, the production of steel and iron is very economical okay the extraction of iron ore and refining alloying or any different types of fabrication process using iron or iron alloys are very easy okay so which is more economical so that is the second reason where we use ferrous alloy for most of the engineering application okay and uh, uh, third one is that it has a versatile mechanical and a physical property it has a good strength uh, hardness ductility and corrosion resistance uh, it's not corrosion resistance corrosion this is uh, resistance is actually low for iron or ferrous alloys and um, remaining all the mechanical properties are very good in case of uh, mechanical as well as physical property also okay um, is very good for ferrous alloy. So that is the main three reason why we use ferrous alloy in uh, most of our engineering application. Okay, so most specifically, the important alloy is steel. Steel is the important alloy. Okay, so we are going to study different types of or classification of steel. <coughs> so in this ferrous alloy, again, we can um, divide into two. That one, first one is steel, and second one is cast iron. Okay, second one is cast iron. And in this case of steel also, again, we can divide into two. That is low carbon content or low alloy steel, low alloy steel, and high carbon content, sorry, it's not um, no, high carbon content, high alloy steel. Okay, that is the classification of steel. In the low alloy steel, again, we can classify into three. Low alloy steel also can be classified into three. Low carbon content, low alloy steel, mild carbon content or medium carbon content, low alloy steel, and third one is high carbon content, alloy steel, low alloy steel. Okay, and in this uh, high alloy content, um, we can uh, other than carbon, there are different other alloy elements are also added to steel. For example, chromium while producing stainless steel, you may heard about stainless steel. So, while producing stainless steel, we add um, more quantity of chromium into the steel. Okay, so similarly, you know, we have high alloy content steel, uh, other, uh, other than carbon. We add different uh, impurity alloy elements into the steel uh, and we can produce high alloy steel. Okay, so stainless steel is an example for high alloy steel. Stainless steel. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this is the three classification of low alloy uh, carbon, uh, low alloy steel. Okay, the carbon content and or the impurity atoms content is low in case of low alloy steel and in case of high alloy steel the other impurity atoms um, other than carbon we add different impurity atoms into the steel and of course the gray cast uh, cast iron also again divided into uh, different first one is gray cast iron gray cast iron and uh, <coughs> nodular cast iron nodular cast iron and white cast iron, 
white cast sorry white cast iron malleable cast iron and finally uh, graphite iron com compacted graphite iron okay so we will study about this different types of cast iron also in the coming lecture so this is the classification of different ferrous alloys different ferrous alloys okay that is the classification so um, uh, initially it is classified into uh, steel and uh, cast iron steel is again classified into there are two types low alloy and uh, high alloy uh, steel in case of low alloy the main uh, component or alloy element is carbon and in case of high alloy uh, other than carbon we add different uh, alloy elements like uh, chromium uh, molybdenum etc into the steel okay and in case of low alloy based on the carbon uh, composition or the um, concentration of carbon we again divide into three low carbon content steel medium carbon content steel and high carbon content steel okay so uh, from the <coughs> phase diagram we already this is my phase diagram in this phase diagram in this phase diagram uh, we have this is 2.14 2.14 that is the up to this 2.14 we consider this region as a region for steel okay this is the region of steel this area and after 2.14 we consider as a cast iron region okay 2.14 to 6.7 is considered as a cast iron region okay and in this uh, actually uh, 2.14 percentage of carbon can be considered as a steel composition but uh, we only most of our practical application theoretically we can say 2.14 is the maximum percentage of carbon allowed for the uh, production of steel Okay, but practically we only um, use up to 1.4 percentage of carbon. Okay, if we increase the carbon uh, concentration more than 1.4 percentage, then steel become more brittle. Okay, the brittleness nature of the steel is increased. So that is not uh, useful or uh, or better property for an engineering application. If the, if the carbon content is more than 1.4 percentage okay so the brittleness increase so it, it is not useful for any of the engineering application so we limit the carbon content up to 1.4 percentage but theoretically we can say up to 2.14 percentage we can consider as a steel composition and after 2.14 we can consider as a cast iron composition okay So that is the first classification. Um, up to 2.14 percentage of carbon, we can consider as a steel. Okay. After 2.14 uh, to 4.3, and uh, similar to this uh, steel or cast iron also. In case of cast iron also, from um, 2.14 to 4.3 is considered as cast iron. But uh, we are not commonly used up to 4.3 percentage of carbon because when we um, give 4.3 percent of carbon into iron the calcium become more more brittle okay so it is not practically useful for any of the engineering application so we limited to uh, up to three percentage or three point something percentage of carbon for calcium also okay so we limit the percentage of carbon so in case of steel we use from um, 0.1 to uh, up to 1.4 percentage and cast iron is 2.1423 2, or 3 point something percentage okay and in this in this uh, again we can classify uh, into uh, plain carbon steel and uh, alloy steel okay this is the plain carbon steel this one low alloy carbon that is the plain carbon steel and the high alloy uh, steel is called alloy steels okay in case of plain carbon steel the carbon is the main alloy element carbon is the main alloy element but in case of alloy steel other than carbon 
in addition to carbon we already we are carbon by some percentage but other than carbon we are some other metallic elements like uh, chromium uh, molybdenum uh, nickel etc to improve the properties of the steel okay so this is the uh, plain carbon steel this one is the plain carbon steel and uh, the high, high alloy steel okay and in plain carbon steel we can divide into low carbon steel medium carbon steel or mild steel and high carbon steel and this is the percentage 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 percentage of carbon if we add 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 percentage of carbon then that type of steel is called low carbon steel low carbon steel and in case of medium carbon or mild steel we uh, uh, we add 0 0.25 to 0.66 percentage of carbon okay and in case of high carbon steel we add 0 0.6 to 1.4 percentage of carbon okay so the carbon addition is limited to 1.4 percentage actually uh, theoretically we can say uh, we can add up to 2.14 percentage of uh, carbon for a steel but we limited to 1.4 percentage in case of high carbon steel we add only up to 1.4 percentage to limit the brittleness nature of the steel okay so now most of the uh, practical application or engineering application we limit the carbon content in the steel up to 1.4 percentage that is called high carbon steel okay so this is the classification of steel based on the carbon content and uh, based on the different alloy elements okay any doubt Any doubt? Okay, come on, Lena. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, in this. Um, most of our engineering application we have three types of um, low alloy steel okay that is low carbon steel mild carbon steel and high carbon steel and uh, out of these three types of steel low medium and high carbon steel this low carbon steel is the greatest quantity uh, which we use in any of the engineering application okay that is the greatest quantity um, we use in any of the engineering application so that is far under 0 0.1 to 0 0.25 percentage of steel and which is basically used for the low, low carbon steel main applications are uh, which is used for automobile bodies for making automobile structural components and uh, different type of uh, structural components like a uh, structure shapes like uh, I, I beam different type of channels uh, you can see in your stress works okay I, I beam channels uh, uh, different types of angles uh, and different types of sheets, pipelines, buildings, bridges, and tin cans. Everything can be um, produced using low carbon steel. Okay, so this is the most uh, or greatest percentage of using steel it comes under this low carbon steel. And its yield strength is uh, about 275. So yield strength is, is not very high. This mega Pascal. The strength is not very high, but it has some ductility also. Okay, it has some ductility also. So, uh, ductility as well as strength. That is the important property of the low carbon steel. Okay, and in this uh, the uh, microstructure, when we consider the microstructure, it has palate and uh, we can see palate and ferrite in the microstructure. Palate and ferrite. You know, palate and ferrite are coarse uh, microstructure uh, components. Okay, and uh, which gives higher ductility. We already discussed about all these things. Okay, so palate and ferrite are the important micro constituents in the low carbon stream. Okay. <coughs> And, uh, and we cannot do any type of heat treatment on this low carbon steel. Okay, we cannot do. 
so we commonly uh, use some cold working operations to improve the strength of the low carbon steel by using some cold working that is one of the important strengthening mechanisms used so by using cold working we can improve the strength we are not using any type of heat treatment process or this uh, playing uh, low carbon steel is unresponsive to the heat treatment process so we are not using any type of heat treatment process for low carbon steel okay and second one is called medium carbon steel and in case of medium carbon steel we use uh, 0.25 to 0.6 percent of carbon is hardened into iron so that is the um, medium carbon steel and medium carbon steel commonly used in a tempered condition we already discussed what is tempered uh, tempering operation okay after production of martin say we use tempering process to improve the ductility and uh, um, uh, reduce the brittleness of the material okay so commonly we use medium carbon steel in the tempered condition okay and the microstructure will be tempered martin say tempered martin say okay after the production of martin say we heat into a um, intermediate temperature and we maintain at that in intermediate temperature for a time then we got a tempered martin set we already discussed this microstructure change um, in the last lectures okay so that is the uh, microstructure of a medium carbon steel and in this medium carbon steel uh, uh, it has a good strength good strength compared to this low carbon steel it has more strength for more medium carbon steel okay but the ductility is low compared to this low carbon steel ductility is low but it has good strength and hardness also it has good hardness also okay and it is a heat treatable one medium carbon steel is a um, heat treatable one and uh, it has good toughness also okay strength the toughness hardness etc are very high for medium carbon steel but its ductility is very low compared to low carbon steel its ductility is low okay and uh, coming to the application commonly we use this medium carbon steel for a uh, wear resistance where we require wear resistance property uh, where in engineering different engineering application in that case we use in that case we use medium carbon steel okay for example um, for making um, the crankshaft like gears um, railway wheels okay so in all this case or any type of machine parts okay so here the main important requirement is wear resistance okay so it need very high hardness so medium carbon steel has high hardness so it, it, it gives a wear resistance as well as it has very good toughness and strength also okay so we use uh, this medium carbon steel such application and another one is high carbon steel the next one is high carbon steel in case of high carbon steel we have 0. 0.6 to 1.4 percentage of carbon okay so here the carbon content is increased so what happened when we increase the carbon content when we increase the carbon content this in this diagram in the in this diagram when we increase the carbon content the uh, carbide fe3c also will increase okay and the carbide content also increase which increase the brittleness as well as the uh, hardness of the material and ductility is reduced okay so by increasing the carbon from the left to right the carbon composition is increasing thereby brittleness hardness strength etc will increase but ductility will reduce okay so in case of high carbon steel you have one uh, up to 1.4 point 0.6 to 1.4 percent of carbon we have and it has very good hardness hardness is the important property very high hardness compared to these two type of uh, steel it has very high hardness and it's very strong which is very strong but main important disadvantage is, is ductility 
His ductility is very, very low. Okay, so this is also used in tempered condition. It is it has very high wear resistance. High carbon steel has very high wear resistance, and which is commonly used for any cutting operation. Okay, like a tool for tool manufacturing, commonly we use high carbon steel because of this high, high, very high hardness and uh, wear resistance property. Okay, it's very difficult to tame and dowler. It's very difficult to wear for this type of material. Okay, and um, uh, here in this uh, high carbon steel, we uh, add different other alloy elements like uh, chromium, vanadium, uh, tungsten, molybdenum, etc., to improve the properties. And this is also used for die making, also. Die making. So for a die also, for an example, in case of forging or any other operation, we have we need dies. Okay. So in case of die also, we need very high wear resistance property or harness. Okay. So here we use high carbon steel. Mainly for cutting tools. For cutting tools. We make cutting tools using high carbon steel and uh, another uh, important applications are we, uh, we uh, use uh, knives knives are developed using or razors uh, hands or blades springs and high strength wires etc produced by high carbon steel so in all these applications the important property requirement is wear resistance okay so because of this very high hardness high carbon steel has very high wear resistance Okay, so these are the main three classification of this low uh, alloy carbon steel. Okay, in the high alloy carbon steel, the important uh, example of high alloy carbon steel is stainless steel. So what is the important property of stainless steel, anyone? Hmm? What is that? Steel. Stainless steel, what do you see in there? Utensils. Either application is either application in Silana commonly stainless steel and you see in there. In the Nangla stainless steel products, the Nanga Illicitum by the Rastipom Yes, rusting. Rust is rusting resistance lay, or corrosion resistance. So that is the important property of stainless steel. Okay. So stainless steel has very high resistance offered against rusting or corrosion. Okay. The main disadvantage of steel. The main disadvantage of steel is rusting. Okay. So during your um, their application period. There is a chance for rusting of the steel. So that is the main disadvantage of this steel when we compare with uh, any other type of non-ferrous alloys. A steel or um, uh, ferrous alloys. Okay. The main disadvantage of ferrous alloys is rusting or corrosion. Okay. But in case of aluminium or copper, the rusting is minimum. But here, this is a big problem. Okay, so to um, uh, avoid this rusting, we can develop a stainless steel. It offers very high resistance against corrosion or rusting. Okay, so how this stainless steel is produced? Stainless steel, uh, of course, in case of stainless steel, also we add carbon as an impurity. Okay, then only it tends to steel. Okay, here we add carbon into um, iron, iron is the base metal, carbon is the impurity atoms or alloy elements added into the um, iron, okay. And other than this carbon, we add chromium, we add chromium into the steel. And chromium percentage should be greater than 11 percentage, it should be greater than 11 percentage. So what is the maximum percentage of carbon possible? Only 1.4 percentage, right? But in case of chromium um, um, stainless steel, we add 
more than 11 percentage it, it is uh, it, it need at least 11 percentage of chromium is required to produce a stainless steel so thereby adding chromium more than 11 percentage we we got a steel with a very high corrosion resistance okay and similar to chromium we are nickel also nickel nickel and uh, of course molybdenum another important alloy elements in steel is molybdenum okay we are nickel and molybdenum also but uh, that is a um, that is used for enhancing the corrosion resistance property of the steel but the important component alloy element is chromium more than 11 percentage okay and uh, other than this corrosion resistance stainless steel has a different wide range of mechanical property okay and um, which is used in different applications there are a number of applications where we use stainless steel okay so that is the different types of steel the this is the basic type of steel other than this type of there are and um, thousand varieties of steels are available thousand varieties of steels are available Marine steel, different types of supra alloys, and it is based on the percentage of carbon, how much amount of carbon is added, and based on the other alloy elements, we add chromium, vanadium, um, and tungsten, um, nickel, um, cobalt, manganese, molybdenum. So there are different types of number of alloy elements we can add into the uh, steel to uh, enhance the different properties. Okay, so based on the percentage of addition of these alloy elements, we got different types of steel. Okay, by varying this percentage, how we use different combination of these alloy elements, and thereby we got different type of steel. So that is the one method of making different types of steel. Another method is, is an important heat treatment. We already discussed about heat treatment process. So by adopting different heat treatment process, process also, we got different types of steel. We um, heat um, heat into oxygen temperature, then we cool rapidly. We got martensite state with the um, high hardness. And if we cool very slowly, we got a high ductile steel. Okay, so by using different heat treatment process also, we got different types of steel different properties steel with the different properties so based on this um, based on the composition of alloy elements as well as this heat treatment process we got different types of steel with the different um, properties okay so that is about uh, steel different types of steel classification and <clears throat> what are the effect of alloy elements on steel we uh, use different types of alloy elements into the steel and we use different types of heat treatment for enhancing the property of steel. <clears throat> Next, we are going to discuss the eight different effect, effects <clears throat> of alloy elements on steel. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> so first one is dislocation movement. By adding any of these alloy elements, how this strength is increased? How this strength is increased? The primary alloy element is carbon. Carbon, uh, how this um, alloy form, is it an interstitial alloy or a substitution alloy? Carbon <coughs> in steel is an interstitial alloy or substitution alloy. Which one is that? Hmm? <coughs> Carbon industrial alloy or substitution alloy or steel industrial alloy. Alloy is changed no? Yes. Hmm. Because I am doing. I am doing revision. I am doing revision. I am doing. Um. Apo, I am saying. Okay. Because I am like I am no more process. I am doing all the process. Carbon distribution alloy and a threat Tavana Varan and the strength in a mechanism of the Varan and Mumba or all case of the third module, second module, Mother Varan, industrial alloy. Ling in a very decade in the Tori Kaila. Okay, 
So <clears throat> carbon is an interstitial alloy. Okay. So by adding carbon into the iron, how this strength is improved. Okay. So uh, other than carbon, we have different such elements uh, like a chromium, vanadium, tungsten, nickel, cobalt, manganese, molybdenum. So there are a number of alloy elements are added into the iron to improve the properties. Okay. So what are the effects of such alloy elements on the steel? So first one is the dislocation, dislocation movement. Okay. Effect of alloy elements on the dislocation movement. We already discussed that's one of the strengthening mechanism that is the um, um, stance solution strengthening solution strengthening so in case of solution strengthening what we do in case of solution strengthening we add any impurity the impurity may be um, interstitial impurity or substitutional impurity okay so when we add any impurity like this alloy element carbon or uh, such alloy elements are impurity so when we add any impurity the impurity occupy either institutionally or substitutionally okay and this impurity develop a strain field around the impurity atom or solute atom the impurity is actually a solute atom so it's create a strain field around the solute or impurity atom okay and this strain field restrict the movement of dislocation through the slip plate so we already discussed that uh, during the solution strengthening mechanism okay so this restrict the movement of dislocation motion along the slip plane and thereby we can improve the strength of the material okay so if there is no uh, dislocation motion then there is no deformation then that uh, yield strength also increased thereby we can increase the yield strength okay so that is the first uh, effect of uh, adding this type of impurity in steel okay so most of the impurities are uh, including carbon that is an interstitial impurity when we add carbon into this uh, iron this carbon occupy the interstitial sides of iron crystal structure and which uh, develop a strain field around the impurity atom and this strain field restrict the movement of dislocation and thereby strength is increased okay so that is the first effect of alloy elements that is the restrict the movement of dislocation motion okay second one is so we already discussed this in the solution strengthening mechanism second one is the effect of alloy elements on polymorphic transmission temperature what is polymorphic transmission of uh, uh, iron anyone what are the different polymorphic transformation of iron and what are the temperature corresponding to polymorphic transformation sir temperature or mila polymorphic transformation they need to Iron, 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 iron. Is, is for iron. I, 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 Microstructural uh -huh. area. So these are the different polymorphic transformation of iron. And what is the crystal structure of alpha? BCC. BCC. Gamma. FCC. FCC. This one. BCC. 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 And what is the temperature range uh, where we can see alpha? Alpha up to nine twelve. Up to nine twelve degrees Celsius, we can see alpha. See this up to nine twelve. Up to thousand three hundred and ninety-four, we can see gamma. gamma. And up to thousand, and that is a melting point, thousand five hundred and thirty-eight degrees Celsius, we can see delta. So these are the polymorphic transformation of fire. 
Okay, and this alloy elements affect this polymorphic transformation temperature. This alloy elements. When we add alloy elements, this temperature and corresponding um, um, transformation phases may vary based on the addition of alloy element. Okay, so that is the second effect of adding alloy element. So what happened um, for the transformation polymorphic transformation temperature? The alpha gamma transformation at a A3, that is the A3 temperature line, that is 9 tall. And the alpha delta transformation A4, that are the two transformation lines. Okay. So uh, alpha, gamma, and delta, etc. exist in different regions of phase diagram. So what happened by the addition of Alloy elements, molybdenum, chromium, tungsten, silicon, vanadium, titanium, rises A3 temperature and lower A4 temperature. Rises A3 temperature and lower A4 temperature. So what is A3? A3 is this one, alpha, gamma, transformation, temperature line. So alpha, gamma, transformation, temperature line. This is alpha, this is gamma. Okay. So this is A3 transformation temperature line, this one. Okay. And what is A4? A4, what is A4? A4 is the gamma delta transformation. That is that transformation is A4 line. So A4 is this one, gamma delta, this one. Okay, gamma delta. This one is gamma delta. Okay. So, this by the addition of this uh, alloy elements, molybdenum, uh, chromium, tungsten, silicon, vanadium, titanium, this A3 temperature line is lower. Sorry, rise the A3 temperature and the A4 temperature line is lower. That means A3 rise means it is shifted from this point to maybe to this point. It is shifted from this point to this point. This line, A3. And this one is lowered by the addition of um, such alloy elements. This is lowered. That means it is shifted from this point to the, like this. That means the pure iron changes from alpha to gamma only at this temperature. Without any other alloy elements, it is it will change at a 912 degree Celsius. But by adding such alloy elements, what happened? This shifting from or the phase change from alpha ferrite to gamma austenite takes place higher than this 912 degree Celsius. Or for any other composition, for example, for this compositional carbon, this is the corresponding change from alpha to gamma. But by adding the alloy elements, this point is shifted to this point. It may be this point or this may be, uh, it may be another this point. Okay, so there is, there will be a rising of this A3 line, lowering of this F4 line. So entire phase diagram is changed. Okay, by the addition of the alloy elements. So that is the effective alloy element on the polymorphic transformation temperature. Okay. And this is the effect of molybdenum, chromium, um, tungsten, silicon, vanadium, titanium. The opposite will, um, so what happened to the region, gamma region, if this A3 is increased, this A3 line shifted to uh, or rise here and the A4 line lowered. What happened? The region of austenite is reduced or contracted. Okay, the region of austenite is contracted because this line is shifted to the uh, top and this line is shifted to the bottom. So this area become contracted. That is the effect by, uh, of adding this type of alloy elements. But the opposite effect is produced by the addition of nickel, manganese, copper, cobalt, etc. By the addition of this type of alloy elements, what happened? 
nickel manganese copper cobalt this a3 line is lowered and this a4 line is raised that means the uh, gamma region the gamma oxalate region expanded okay and the chromium molybdenum uh, um, tungsten form very stable carbide and favor for the precipitation of carbides so uh, carbides are formed with this uh, molybdenum chromium and the vanadium sorry um, tungsten okay so this is the effect of alloy elements on the polymorphic transformation temperature that is the second one third one is the alloy effect of alloy elements on the formation of carbides so in case of this um, this fe3c is a carbide iron carbide fe3c that is the simulate okay so similarly by addition of the different types of alloy elements there are different carbides are formed for example titanium when we add titanium into this steel this titanium react with the carbon and form titanium carbide okay so different carbides are formed by the addition of alloy elements <clears throat> and thereby properties of the materials also enhance okay so alloy elements when we add different alloy elements it will react with the carbon and form carbides so carbides is actually the carbides are uh, enhance the brittleness as well as the hardness of the material so for example we can see here in this region we have less amount of carbon so carbon occupy the interstitial position of the iron but here in this region in the right side of this phase diagram we have more amount of carbon so the carbon um, most of the carbon occupy the interstitial position of the iron and the remaining carbon react with the uh, iron and form fe3c carbide okay this carbide particles are enhance the hardness and the brittleness of the material so when we go from left to right in this phase diagram here in this right region we have more amount of carbon or the brittleness and the hardness of the material will be very high okay so in this region we have less carbon less carbide and the ductile property is higher than that of brittleness property of the steel but here in this region for cast iron you have more amount of carbide and the hardness and the brittle property will be very high so by the addition of this type of uh, alloy elements the and the formation of carbide enhance the brittleness and the hardness of the material uh, as well as the wear resistance when when the hardness increase the wear resistance is also increased okay the carbides of chromium and uh, vanadium has very uh, has have very high hardness and wear resistance okay so by the addition of this um, where we use hard, very high hardness and wear resistance material can you give an example for the application of using a high wear resistance material hmm chromium what do you use in that you see in the area wear resistance at all materials application area tools tools le the tools nu arnjana the actually the cutting tools uh, the tip pieces like yeah yes uh, cutting tools in the tip nu arnjana tip area is a very sharp area where the material the um, amount of material is very um, law okay so there we need very high wear resistance okay so by high wear resistance we got higher tool life we can use that tool for um, different machining operations okay so uh, for any tool to improve the tool life we need a wear resistant material and similarly um, different where we have a different area where and the wear is so for example in case of meshing gears meshing gears and then um, tooth we, we need a material in the tooth region with a very high wear resistance alle theyne theernu 
Okay, so in all this case, we can add such such type of um, uh, alloy elements to improve the wear resistance property. Okay, so nickel, aluminium, silicon does not form carbides. Okay, and in the presence of iron, cause instability of the iron carbide. So we are not using nickel and aluminium and the silicon to in, to develop carbides in the iron. But this titanium and niobium is very strong carbide formation tendency alloy elements and the chromium molybdenum um, tungsten vanadium manganese etc form carbides okay and uh, when we add more than one type of these alloy elements a complex carbides may form so thereby we can enhance or we can alter the properties of the material so this this is very important the formation of carbide so in case of iron carbon equilibrium diagram, the FP3C, that is the cement, that is a one type of carbide. What is a carbide? A, car, a carbon or any of the alloy elements. Um, uh, or uh, here iron is react with the carbon and form a carbide. And if we add any of the alloy elements, this alloy elements react with the carbon and form a compound. That is the carbide. And the, when we increase the percentage of carbide in a material, the brittleness, hardness wear resistance can be enhanced okay so that is the effect fourth one is the grain growth effect of alloy elements on the grain growth so we know during the solidification process initially nucleus is formed in different location of the molten material and after that a dendrite grain growth takes place okay and based on the number of nucleus formed in the material or in the molten material the we got uh, based on that we got a finer grain the material or coarse grain material the number of nucleus are very if the number of nucleus are no nucleus formed are very small number then each nucleus develop a large grain a large grain is formed okay so here in this case we have only uh, five nucleus and uh, five grains are formed so these are the coarse grains but in case of a uh, uh, material with a large number of nucleus for example here we have large number of nucleus is formed so small grains are formed after grain growth okay so the grains are finer grains okay so this alloy elements different types of alloy elements affect the formation of or the um, affect the grain growth of the material during the solidification process so how these alloy elements affect the grain growth by adding different alloy elements actually they do uh, they create different nucleus or they enhance the uh, nucleus creation capacity of the material by providing some cooling spots on the material during solidification okay so by adding different alloy elements number of such nucleus is formed and which alter or accelerate the grain growth or retard the grain growth some of the um, alloy elements retard the grain growth by formation of large number of nucleus and some of the alloy elements accelerate the grain growth by formation of very few number of nucleus. Okay, so chrome is the most important one of uh, alloy elements which increase the grain growth. And but niobium and the vanadium retard the grain growth by increasing the. Uh, we already um, discussed that uh, grain refiners, grain refiner, during solidification process. By adding niobium, and sorry, this is nickel, nickel and uh, vanadium, or niobium also is a grain refiner. Okay, by adding grain refiner, large number of nucleus can be produced during the solidification process, and thereby we can reduce the grain growth. Okay, so that is another one important uh, property enhancement. So uh, if we produce a coarse grain, then the material will be a ductile one. We have a um, more smaller grains or finer grains, the strength will be very high. Okay. 
So that is the another property. The next one is the effective follow elements on the displacement of eutectoid point. It's very important. So in case of uh, this, what is the eutectoid point? Which one is the com composition eutectoid point? What is the composition eutectoid point? How much? 4.3%. Eutectoid. 0.76. 0.76% This is eutectic. Okay, so eutectoid point, this is the 0.76% of carbon. This point. So in this, we can shift this point. This eutectoid point can be shifted to the left or right by adding different alloy elements. For example, by adding alloy elements, we can change the eutectoid point from this point to from this point to this point. That means I shift the eutectoid point from here to right side. Or I can change the eutectoid point to the left also by adding different alloy elements. Okay, this one. This is, I shift this point sound six percentage carbon. If there is no other alloy elements, only carbon is the impurity atom, then point sound six will be the uh, eutectoid point. By adding different alloy elements, I can either I can shift it to the right or to the left. Okay, so that is the shifting of the eutectoid point. So that is also an important. Um, uh, thereby we can improve the properties also. Okay, by shifting this eutectoid point, this is very important during the heat treatment process. We can shift the eutectoid point to the left or right by adding different alloy elements. We can enhance the properties by heat treatment process. Okay, so how the addition of any alloy elements to the carbon steel diminishing the solubility of carbon in the austenite, and so the result in the displacement of eutectoid point to the left of the equilibrium diagram. Okay, so change in the position of eutectoid point under the position of alpha and the delta phase field. So addition of 2.5 percent of manganese to the steel containing 0.65 percent of carbon will give a completely palletic structure in normalized condition along with the reduction in the eutectoid temperature to 650 degrees Celsius. So by the addition of 2.5 percentage of manganese, what happened? By the addition, it is 727 is the eutectoid point temperature. That 727 changes to 650. That means this line, this horizontal line shifted to this. Yeah, 650. Okay, so uh, the new eutectoid point will be at 0 0.65 percentage of carbon. That means 0 0.65 percentage of carbon, for example, it will be here. It will be here. So it will be like this. New eutectoid point will be like this. This is the point, eutectoid point. Okay, so both the temperature and the composition is altered by the addition of 2.5 percentage of manganese. Okay, so it's based on the by the addition of these alloy elements, the solubility of the carbon will vary. Okay, so presence of nickel and the manganese also lowers the eutectoid temperature. So thereby we can change the heat treatment process also. So this is very um, important thing in, during the heat treatment process. Effective alloy elements on the displacement of eutectoid point. So these are the different alloy elements. Effective alloy elements on the eutectoid temperature. You can see this is the original eutectoid temperature without any alloy elements. Other than carbon, if there is no alloy element, 727 degrees Celsius is the eutectoid temperature. By adding chromium, uh, tungsten, silicon, molybdenum, titanium, eutectoid temperature is increased. By adding manganese, nickel, eutectoid temperature is decreased. So depending upon the application and heat treatment process, by adding these alloy elements, we can alter the eutectoid temperature of the phase diagram. Another one, the effective alloy element on retarding on the transformation rate. Okay, what is transformation? During the TTD diagram, from the TTD diagram, we can transform the 
microstructure from this is the oscillate in the TT2 diagram. This is the oscillate condition, oscillate temperature rise. And here we have a C curve. We have a C curve in the TT diagram. Okay. So this is 727 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the alloy has got high influence on the phase transformation rate. Oscillate transformation temperature is shifted up or down by the alloy element. So we can change the 727 degrees Celsius by adding alloy elements. Nickel and manganese can then lower the oscillate transmission temperature. Okay, by the addition of nickel and manganese, it uh, reduced to another value, maybe 650. And uh, the pause point of the transmission oscillates on slow cooling. And so thereby we can stabilize the oscillates. Even by adding uh, different alloy elements, we got oscillate at the room temperature also. Okay, at the room temperature, um, uh, naturally we have ferrite, ferrite microstructure. But by adding different alloy elements, we can stabilize oscillate in the room temperature also. Okay, so we can alter the oscillate transformation temperature as well as the transformation rate by adding different alloy elements. Another one is effect alloy element the corrosion resistance we already discussed in case of stainless steel we add chromium more than 11 percent of chromium addition actually what happened during the addition of chromium so when we add chromium a thin oxide layer is formed on the surface okay so in this steel on the surface we have a in the surface we have a oxide layer is formed which actually protect the steel from the atmosphere corrosion. Okay, so the surface is not exposed to atmosphere by the formation of oxide layer. So thereby we can resist the corrosion or rusting of the material. Okay, so this chromium, aluminium, silicon um, are the important alloy elements which improve the corrosion resistance of the steel. Another one um, uh, which improve the mechanical properties. Of course, most of the engineering uh, allo um, um, alloy elements improve the mechanical properties of the steel. It increases the strength of the steel, hardness, toughness, ductility. So by varying the percentage comb combination of alloy elements, we can alter the mechanical properties of the steel. Okay. So that is the different types of effects on of alloy elements on the steel. Okay, so these are the different effects. Any doubt in that? Any doubt? Any doubt based on this effect of alloy elements on steel or um, based on the classification of steel? Okay, so next you have an assignment. Uh, you have to write and uh, prepare a PPT based on this enhancement of steel properties by adding these 14 alloy elements. What happened to the steel properties by the addition of these 14 type of alloy elements? So this is your assignment. You have to write a or uh, prepare a no, not writing, you have to prepare a PowerPoint presentation. Okay. And after that, after preparing this PowerPoint presentation, um, you have to record a lecture based on your PowerPoint presentation and upload your PowerPoint as well as the recorded voice. You need only uh, submit only the voice. Okay. So, Along with the PowerPoint presentation, you have to submit the voice recording of the presentation also. Okay, so in this, we have 14 alloy elements. 
Okay, what are the effect of addition of this type of alloy elements? For example, in case of molybdenum, the effect of properties on steel by addition of molybdenum. Okay, so it promotes the hardenability of the steel. Steel become fine grained. Okay, the uh, usually tough at the various hardness level. Toughness is increased. Okay, temper brittleness is counteract the tendency to a temper brittleness. Tensile strength is raised. Deep strength at the high temperature gives enhance the corrosion resistance and enhance the abrasion or wear resistance. So that is the ad, uh, enhancement of properties by the addition of molybdenum. And it is addition in percentages between 0.1 to 0.4 percentage. Okay. So you have to write the enhancement of property by the addition of this alloy element. And also you have to write an very important application, exceptionally from the modern technology. For, for any modern technology where we use uh, a steel with a higher molybdenum content. Okay. So you have to write an application also. For every uh, alloy element, you have to write one application. For example, um, from, um, over the so nickel. By the addition of nickel, we got different. Um, <coughs> increase the toughness and the resistance to impact. So type of application for example in case of or rocket in the part or engine part or cryogenic engine part or modern technology use in any of the engineering application nickel what is the importance of addition of nickel onto the steel i'm going to use the steel use in the application identify application Okay, so uh, two slides we have particular material na molybdenum no alloy elements na. Okay, and the first slide no arna, explaining the properties of the enhanced the properties of the uh, steel by the addition of the alloy element, and the next slide about the application. Okay. So application in order information and it another thing of syllabus lilla, but application in order must try to get it. Okay, so this is your assignment and you have to submit this. You can submit on the next Monday. Okay, next Monday submit in 14 like uh, slam, total 28 slides in doubt, two slides for one material. Okay, and you have to prepare a voice recording based on the presentation and submit the PowerPoint as well as the voice presentation. I'll tomorrow, no key wise up. Okay, no key wise up. I'm going to detail it. I'm going to get a voice presentation. I'm going to be a memory. I will upload it. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to upload it. I'm going to make the steel fine grained. Well, fine grained ion or the property enhancement and then we can see maximum way or a slide or a slide or a minute to explain you about 30 minutes in the other cover you know 30 minutes in the voice presentation already upload here okay so this is your uh, assignment due date is Monday so the details in classroom upload in a go any doubt